I'm at Baldy's Barbers in Buckinghamshire. Baldy needs no introduction, but I'll introduce him nonetheless. Baldy is a multi barbershop owner. Baldy is also an international educator for the Andes Company. I have personally seen uh, Baldy in New York, London. If the budget stretches to it, I'm sure the Andes will give him a Paris gig too. <laughs> the reason. <laughs> I'm interviewing uh, Baldy today. He's been nominated as uh, Barber of the Month for Barber Envy. So I'm just here basically to find out Baldy's journey, what led Barber Envy to nominate Baldy to be Barber of the Month. So, uh, I have no <laughs> idea. Um, it, do you know what? It was a surprise to me. So, um, thank you, Barber Envy. <laughs> It's nice, I can't knock it. Well, the reason they've done that is probably the fact that you're educating internationally. Yeah. Not for any company, but for the Andis uh, Clipper Company. Uh, you're educating in London, mm -hmm. you, you know, the London School of Barbara. Yeah. You, you know, you're doing That's many good things. We, we do a lot of stuff. You're um, state registered? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was looking up on um, the Hair Federation last night, uh, and joining them, it's like, there's so many different things at them. And even now, uh, for someone like me, I still look into these things and go, oh, do you know what, yeah, I might associate with them, or them, or them. But, you know, it's, it, everything's always changing. Um, and it's good, the industry's fantastic. You know, for someone like me to, to go to New York, for instance, you know, and, and go on the main stage at IBS, it, it's a great opportunity. I only dreamt of things like that when I was young, you know? Um, and I started out as a hairdresser. So I used to like go to Sound International, things like that, and see people up on stage there, and go, oh my God, you know, look at them, I wanna do that. Um, and then your career just goes off and, and it changes direction maybe, and stuff like that, and I go into barbering. Um, but now, I'm up on those stages, and it's so cool, you know? Um, I love it, but with, for us, you know, we get to use fantastic gear, uh, the best equipment that there is, and I get to tell my story a little bit as well, you know, because you add yourself into whatever you're doing. Um, and while people want to listen, I'm going to tell them. <laughs> so talk me through how this um, international gig came around in New York with yourself and Kieran. How, how... Um, I suppose um, we set out um, since we've been with Andis, uh, which was a year ago, so uh, it's been quite action-packed. We've done lots of different things in this country and stuff like that. But initially, when uh, we sort of did a live interview at Barber UK last year, there was a few of us. So there was myself, Kieran, uh, Darren Jones, Alan Bick then, um, and I suppose it was we were on trial. You know, have a look, see what you can do. Um, and I had the opportunity to do um, the BBA stage. So, um, me being me, I was like, yeah, I'll do it, no worries. Um, Kieran came up with me in the end, because um, we do everything together generally. So, um, we absolutely smashed it. And we literally came off that stage, and um, Karen, who's the, the vice president, went to us, um, listen, how do you fancy um, America next year? And we were like, yeah, of course, yeah. But never really thought any more of it. We just thought, you know, yeah, just say that or whatever, you know, keep it sweet. <laughs> and then as the, year, as the year's gone on and we've gone to one thing, another thing, and, you know, done so many good things, it got to the point where it was like started to become a reality that we were going to go to New York. And it was like, well, I suppose we had a choice. We had a conversation about this with, with Arlene Nunes. And she said, we were offered either New York or Orlando, whichever way around it went. Um, and I, to be fair, I'm glad I chose New York. Um, and I think uh, a couple of others are going out to Orlando in the summer. Um, but me and Kieran went to New York and it was fantastic. And uh, to be fair, I would go back every year and do IBS. Mm. Um, because it's massive. Um, it, and we had such a great reception from people. 
and people that, it's, it's always weird, when you go out to a different country, you don't know if those people know who you are or what response you're gonna get. And we had a fantastic response where people were coming up, oh, I know who you are, blah, 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 this and that, it's so great that you're over here, and this and that. And we didn't really, I don't think we expected that. You know, in this country it's a bit different. You go to a show, the people know who you are, you know. Um, but to go somewhere else and get that, you know, from, you know, international big people, big names. Yeah, exactly. You get people that I follow, that I've followed since, I suppose, Instagram started and stuff like that. And I go, oh, I love his work, you know, this, that, and the other. And you just presume that they don't know who you are, you know. And then when you meet them at places like that, and they're like, oh, hey, man, how are you? Uh, let's swap numbers. And they're like, no, we'll do something. And I'm like, ah, that's really cool. Look who that is. They're, they're a pair. Yeah. And it is really, really strange, you know, but it's fantastic. So did you, you were next door to uh, Layright, wasn't you? Don, yeah. So I was Don, speaking to the guys there and stuff like that. Like, um, I suppose I, I followed, like, you've got uh, Jake, um, Jibrek. So I followed him anyway, and he followed me but we'd never really met or, or spoke as such. So um, it was nice to catch up with him and actually speak to him. And then uh, Julius Cesar, um, he came over and he was like, oh yeah man, uh, swap numbers, uh, this, that, and the other. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I've followed him since, uh, since forever. Um, just because he was a cool character. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is really good. And then I got speaking to Mike and people that, you know, help run it all and all that sort of thing. So, you know, if I can hook up with them at some point, that'd be awesome. So, so you're saying that you found, when we went to Ground Zero on that day, you said you found the whole thing overwhelming and you was kind of looking up in the air at the skyscrapers and thinking, I'm just a barber, I'm just a barber. Yeah, so, that's the thing. Yeah. But we are, we're barbers. And, you know, you've got to stay grounded because this is my everyday job. I come here every day and I charge £12.50 to someone to walk in my door and go, there you go mate, there's a nice haircut, oh, well, thanks very much, see you in a couple of weeks, you know, and I've done that for 30 years. So to go, although I get to go and do all this other stuff and it's like, ah, that's fantastic, my, my customers that come in through the door, not all of them know all that, they don't care about that side of it, they want a good haircut, you know, mm. and so you have to stay with that side, that's, this is my life. You know, the other thing, fantastic, and I love doing it, and, and it's, it's absolutely brilliant, and it gives you that recognition that maybe you didn't have, you know? So, but apart from that, you, you have to keep feet on the ground, you know? Yeah, we but, but, you've got, but you have to think about it, logically. You've been doing the game for how many years? For 30 years. 30 years, so to get a degree, it takes three, four years to yeah. become a professor, it becomes eight years, so you must be like a grand professor Honestly. in your game. So yes, as much as you must stay grounded, you've got to think about the experience. Any head could walk through that door and yeah. you could deal with that, you know? Yeah. You know um, how to market business, you know how to keep a customer happy, you know when the customer's got problems. Yeah. You know, people buy into that and you have to, as much yeah, as stay grounded. That's, that's you know, that, that's part of my everyday life. So, you know, that's what it's about for us. Um, it helps that we, we, treat, we treat our shop a bit like a, a stage anyway, right? So it's about, when I've, I've got a, a full row of customers there, um, we treat this as, as our stage and we entertain those people. So although we're cutting there, it's about us performing in front of them. You know, mm -hmm. that's what keeps bringing them back. The fact that they come in, they have a great time in here, they have loads of banter, um, but they're entertained to a degree. Because if you're sat there for like three hours waiting for a haircut, which that's what our queue is most of the time, then you don't want to sit there in silence. You want to be entertained. So we have a good laugh with, with our clientele. Um, but that's the same when we then go on to stage. So when we did uh, British Master Barbers last year, um, we, we generally go up on stage and we go, listen, we're going to bring you into the barbershop. That, that's part of us. You know, I don't go on there and go, I'm going to teach you a load of education. Because technically, I don't have that up here. I, you know, I started off, I, didn't, I wasn't qualified, I'm still not qualified. Um, but I've got a lot of knowledge. So, but it's all done in the barbershop. 
So for me, I want to bring that out there, you know, and, and people can associate to it because they'll go, do you know what, that's, that's what it's like in shop. So we, we go on that basis, you know, and then chuck in a bit of technical know-how in between. Um, but little things like, I, when I came off stage there and I spoke to Simon Shaw, right, and he said, do you know what, I really like that. He said, it, it is, it's like a bar shop. He said, it's, it's a good concept, the way that you do things. So, you know, if, if people like that that have been doing stage work and education for years and years, you know, can associate to us, brilliant. And we're, you know, we're getting it across how it should be. So that answers your question why Barbara and have chosen you. If Andy's can recognise it, the likes of Simon Shaw can recognise yeah, it, then Barbara Envy can recognise it too. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> and the London School of Barbara had yeah. you in. Yeah. Which was the uh, last time we spoke, you, yeah. you said that they intended to have you in and yeah, I mean, I actually met you there. Yeah, we've, we've done a, uh, been down there a few times, um, I suppose since, you know, they, what they do down there, um, I think it's great, the ability that they get people to over a short period of time, is fantastic, you know, um, and it, it's good for us to go down and, and see what other people are doing, how they're training and, um, and if we can put a little bit of our experience into people, you know, it, it works. So I like the fact that they get guest barbers in for people to, to see and go, oh, right, so he's been doing it that long, and that's how he does things. You know, we don't work the same way as everyone. Not everyone works the same way, you know, that's what makes it brilliant, the fact that I can go somewhere, and I've just got, like, when we come back from New York, I've changed the way that I'm cutting because I've watched certain people and I've gone, well, that's cool, I like how that's done. I, I watched Danny quite a bit, um, and, and I followed Danny for a long time. But little things that, that they do there, on their fades and things, it, it's slightly a softer sort of look to, to what we do. Um, but I've started doing that more. Um, you know, and I'm like, oh, that's really cool, I really love it. Um, softer in the sense that it's blur blurry. <coughs> Yeah. Funny enough, because I interviewed the girl from Hawaii, right? the Korean girl, and she keeps talking about blurry fade. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is, because it's softer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, whereas we're used to like, maybe a little bit sharper and stuff. Poor so, transitions. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. But if you're saying it's softer and it's a fade, then it must be a poor transition. Yeah, I'm not I, a barber. I think what it is, I don't, I don't know what it is, it's, it sounds weird, but wherever it is, I like it. Um, but I think it's how high you're gonna go. So the transition from, say, above the temples downwards, we would, I used, we used, we do a thing called skull fade, right? Which everyone probably knows about now, where we take it right, right now. So, but we would ordinarily take that up quite high. It's our thing. That's how we do things. Uh, you know, we leave a slight weight line in it, stuff like that. Uh, so the fade, we, we fade within a gap of about an inch, something like that. You know, our transition from literally like to head. Um, what they do out there is it's a lot, the transition's lower, it starts lower and, and builds up, so like that. So it leave, it's a softer. Sort of that so, makes sense. Yeah. The more you, the, the the longer length that you fade anything. Yeah. Or and, have a gradient. I think. It's, yeah. It, it's one of those things where they leave like um, a heavier shadow on temples and things like that, so you get a sharper look to the temple and then fade out completely on the sideburns. So I've been doing loads of that. More contrast. Yeah, and it, it it's a nice look to be fair. Um, but it, when I used to look at it online and things like that, I used to think, oh, I don't know if that, you know, I'm not sure about that, or how you get to that. But then watching it, I'm like, ha, that's how you do it. <laughs> so I'm doing that. <laughs> so that's what I've started doing. And it's nice that, you know, at my age, I can still come back from somewhere and go, I'm chucking that into my game. I'm going to mix that up with what I do, you know? That's so you're something more for your local, local stage work. Yeah. Domestic stage work, yeah. should I say. Yeah. Now you're yeah. an international yeah. kind of guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm international. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit weird. And since I last spoke to you, you've become state registered. Why did you feel the need to become state registered? Um, I don't think it's a bad thing to, to be associated to something. Um, I think for, for someone like me that has no qualifications, 
I think it's, it's ideal to be registered somewhere, have an association behind you. Uh, I think it's good that your clients can come in and they see that and they go, all right, you're state registered. In, in Wait, did I see it in here? Did that one's up on the wall up here. Okay, so, all right, yeah, yeah. Um, that. We tend to put everything on, on show as much as we can. Um, and then people sit there and they go, oh, do you know what? They don't necessarily see that in our shops, you know? Um, and it's a good thing, you know, they're there to back you up at times and help you out. You can't go wrong with it, really. Um, I think at some point it'd be nice if all the various associations can sort of merge something together um, and do something more solid. I think probably to make it compulsory. Yeah, I think because everyone's wanting to do it, but how do, how do you join that? You know what I mean? It's, it's like Northern Ireland, isn't it? It's going to take forever. Um, so the number of meetings, just have one meeting yeah. to discuss what you all want, put it all together. There you go. So I don't get why they can't have, I don't know, a representative from each that gets together and they go, okay, we're on a board now. And, and that's how we, we do it. And we go, we regulate it like that. They each have their own feed in, but they're together at some point, you know? And that, that's what it needs. You know, they all have great ideas, but they need to all be able to put them together and, and do something with it. So, so what, what kind of reaction was you getting from the American barbers when you kind of told them that there is no regulations in the UK? <coughs> um, yeah, they, some of them see it a, a bit weird because like for us, when, when you're doing your stuff out there, you have a barber license mm -hmm. and you have a stylist. So you have a, a stylist can't use an open razor because they're not licensed to it, um, whereas barbers can. So there's two different ways of going. And it, although a stylist can cut men's hair, they, they can't finish it off how we would finish it off. So when you're talking to people and you go, right, okay, uh, when you're doing a stage shop, you go, how many barbers here, who's a stylist, blah, 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 right, so as a stylist, you can't do this. So we'll do this to show you how it works or whatever. Oh, I understand that, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a little bit different for them. Um, so they sort of see it as they go, well, what do you mean? You're not, no one's licensed. And it's like, <laughs> no, yeah, anyone can open a barber shop, you know, which is great in some respects. <laughs> in other respects, you know, you might, maybe some bloke down the road who can't cut hair can open a shop, but then hopefully they don't last long, you know? The ones that have the longevity, uh, you know, can obviously do what they need to do, so, you know. So England does kind of need those standards with the rapid growth of barbering. It needs, it needs something, I think. Um, but then, you know, you've got people like myself that if, if that was the case, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here, would I? No, you would be, based on your experience. So the criteria at the moment should be... Yeah, the criteria at the moment is... Six like, years, prove that you've been in the industry yeah. for six years, or NPQ I, something. Yeah, I, I get grandfather rights, if you like, because yeah. I'm old look. But, um, if I was starting out, or whatever, and like I did back then, then it would have been a different story, wouldn't it? Because I didn't go to college, I didn't go and get him, would they didn't have any in what they see in guilds. Yeah. Um, so, I wouldn't have got any of that. Yeah, but they're pre-warned, they're not just gonna say, right, you need to be state registered. They're gonna say, in such and such a time, probably 18 months to a year, this is the criteria, and that gives people enough time yeah. to get themselves yeah. in the right place. I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think everyone needs to be moving in the same direction. You know, so the next generation has come through. Hopefully they're all, uh, all getting qualified somewhere. Okay. So last time we met, you kind of outlined uh, quite a few of your goals, which after the conversation today, we can see that you've attained. Mm. What's next for Baldy? Can uh, you kiss the camera again? Next for me. Uh, do you know what? I'm just going with the flow. Um, like I said, it's, I've got to keep a balance between um, you know life and and career, if you like. So I can only do so much, but yeah, I want to go abroad a bit more. There's certain companies I want to work with more um, and try and do more stuff with. Um, but I just, I'm enjoying what I do. 
you know, and if, if, if people go to me, you know, they contact me and go, listen, Bobby, can you come and do this with me? If, if it's feasible, um, then yeah, I'll, I'll do it, you know, I'm approachable. Um, but there's, there's certain things that I want to do, sort of, I suppose, myself, that, that I, I enjoy. Like, I, I love the pop-up stuff and, and stuff like that, you know, the, the conventions and things. Um, that's like the sort of cool side, you know. Yeah, for, yeah. for me, you've got that kind. Of, you yeah. have, you do have that kind of personality where you need to be tamed and yeah, certain I, geeks are you, you're constrained, aren't you? Yeah, you're a wild animal. There you go. <laughs> so, like you know, my commercial me <laughs> and my non-commercial me, and I love you know if I can get the the merge between the two, it's awesome. You know what I mean? Which yeah. I do sometimes, you know, like, I suppose when I, I've, I've met some cool people at conventions and we did some stuff with Sandy Man Chop Shop last year and Apothecary 87 and I met Matt Robinson there and, and we've become really good friends. So we're going to do a little bit more with that. I've got some other stuff in the pipeline that's really big, um, if it comes off. Um, when it comes off. Yeah, fingers crossed, fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, and that will take it another direction, which is my own commercial me. Um, but I keep trying things like that. You know, that that's the side that I enjoy. So if I can get you know those sort of gigs and, and stuff like that, like I, I want to try and do maybe a bit with Laywright over the next year and stuff. You know, I I like the way they come across. Um, so did you um, have words with Dunny? No. Do you know okay. what I I met him. I think not last year, the year before at Barber Connect when he was over. Um, but just stay high and, and stuff like that, like most people did. Um, but I didn't speak to him out in New York. Um, I suppose because he, he's about doing this, that, and the other, you know, he's, he's being him. Um, yeah. So I, saw, I spoke to Mike, um, who I suppose is next. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Mike. So, um, you know, we, we had a good chat. And, Fingers crossed, if they start doing a bit more over here, then you know, I'll try and hook up with them. Why are they right now? Um, I think they're cool. It's, do you know what? It, that's what it boils down to. It boils down to which direction you want to go, who you want to work with. Um, and Cool branding or the actual product itself? I like the, the product itself. To be fair, I've, I've just ordered a load uh, yesterday. Right. So um, they gave me a load of stuff to, to use out there. So I started using some of their gear, uh, and I like it. As, as pomade, we've used it in the past anyway, um, and it's, it's probably the, the strongest pomade that there is out there. So when you're doing pops and stuff like that, bang that in, put it in shape, boom, it's there. So I like the product, but I like the concept of okay. how they are. Um, so there's them, there's, you know, uh, apothecary, I still do stuff with them. I'm not associated to them and I don't stock their products, which is a weird thing. But I have a really good working relationship with them. So if when I go and do some stuff with them, um, you know, I use their gear, I used it in New York, um, I like their stuff. But just because I don't stock it doesn't mean I don't have to, I can't work with them. You know, we have a good, good working relationship. Um, so they just sorted out some jewelry. Check that out. <laughs> um, so yeah, think companies like that. I like that that side of it. You know. Um, so what have you actually got in the diary? In the diary. That's big. Interesting. Mm. I can't. No, I can't. I, I, no, I can't. Apart from our Andy stuff. Um, and What's bigger than the diary for Anderson? What, well, nothing yet. <laughs> I'll see. But for for Andis, we've got obviously all the gigs that come up, all the main events. Mm -hmm. So, and we've got like you know, Barbeknet, we've got uh, Sound International and things like that, and then maybe Chicago, uh, and then hopefully next year maybe New York again. Um, so, we've got stuff like that all lined up, which is you know you ain't going to get much bigger. Um, the IBS New York, you definitely ain't getting any bigger. Um, mm. You know, to do the main stage there, that was huge. Um, so, I've got all that. 
And then it's working on other stuff, like we want to work on our branding. I've got the shop being redone uh, over the next month or so. Um, so there's a lot going on, okay. um, you know, so. Just what, look out for you on Instagram. Yeah, I, I suppose. I'm not so uh, prolific on, on social media, really, than, than, than some are. Um, I tend to keep my posts every other day, stuff like that. Um, I'm not on Facebook. I tweet. You can follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I tweet. Um, and, and Instagram, obviously. Instagram's a great tool. Um, but I, I, I haven't got the time to sit there and I run free shops. I haven't got the time to sit there all night and go, oh, hi everyone. Sorry, I'd love to, but I, I really, I have a normal life as well. Okay. Um, you know, and it, and it, that's how you build your profile, and I admire everyone that does that, but I don't have the time for it, you know? So, but I'm all right at cutting air. <laughs> and I see that, and uh, Eileen's made you hide all the new prototypes. Um, yeah, you can't see that, can you? I mean, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to feel about prototypes. <laughs> I can imagine but there's saying, some really cool stuff coming out. I can imagine her saying, Larry's coming tomorrow, make sure you hide all the No, do you know what? Um, <laughs> she did message me and say, oh, I hear you're doing an interview for Barbara Abbey. I was like, how do you know that? And she goes, I know everything. I was like, oh, right, okay. Um, but no, it's, it's fairly standard. You know, if we get sent a new piece of equipment, then we use it in the premises and we don't use it anywhere else. Uh, you know, we're not going to post it anywhere or go blah, 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 because we want to see if it works, you know, and that's what they want to see. They don't want to see if it works on the shop floor. Uh, so, you know, we get to test all these exciting new products that are coming out. Yeah, I feel like a UN inspector now. I'm going to have to start doing, <laughs> I'm going to have to start doing random droppings to see the, to see the new stuff. Yeah, yeah, but we don't get it all. It gets split. <laughs> Between different people, so yeah. Okay, then, Gordy, that's perfect. Um, I think we're going to close up the interview now. It was great speaking okay. to you again. And in closing, like I always like to ask, what words of advice could you give to young up and coming barbers that probably wanted to emulate what you've done, which is quite a lot, become an international barber and international educator? Um, we get asked this a lot, um, how, how do you get to this point? Um, it's, it's very exciting, um, but you, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, you have to work at things, get good at what you do first. First and foremost, you've got to be a good partner. Um, and then from there, you, you can build your platform from there. You know, contact people, go and work with people. Um, it's, it's not about money, if, if that makes sense. It's about getting to where you need to be. You know, money, money I should imagine will come at some point with, with people, but it's, it's about putting yourself out and, you know, going that little bit extra mile. If you want to learn something, go and see someone, you know, and ask them. Say, listen, can I do a date with you just to watch and learn? Most people want to share their knowledge. You know, that's how the industry is at the moment. It's, you know, nine times out of ten, people will want to help you, you know, especially if you're young. Um, so, little things like that. that. That's all I can advise, is it takes time and put yourself out and, and get there, you know? So, it's taken me 30 years.